Hello, I'm Dr. Vanita Rattan, and this channel is dedicated to skin of color. So today we're going to be talking about keratosis pilaris. I get asked about this condition all the time. Now, there are two schools of thought when it comes to keratosis pilaris, and when it comes to skin of color, we have to be a little bit more careful. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what's going on with your skin, the best home remedies, the worst mistakes made, and which professional treatments that you should avoid. So keratosis pilaris can feel like rough, bumpy skin. It tends to occur on the upper arms, the thighs, buttocks, and cheek areas. It can start from infancy or during puberty. It can worsen during pregnancy and during winter time as well because of dehydration of the skin. The reason it occurs is because of dead skin cells that basically block up the hair follicles. And so that's what leads to that bumpy appearance. Okay, so a lot of websites and information will tell you to really scrub the area, use a loof, use AHAs, alpha hydroxy acids, um, and be really harsh with the skin. However, we can't afford to do that with skin of color because you can get micro tears, which will lead to hyperpigmentation. And that's worse than the actual keratosis pilaris itself. So we have to be a lot more careful with what we do. So the first thing I would say is when you have a bath, make sure it's a nice warm bath, but short. So you don't want a long bath because that will waterlog the skin and will increase tra transepidermal water loss. And so your skin actually becomes more dehydrated afterwards. So you wanna make sure that your bath is short just to open up the pores. I would then use a 2% salicylic acid wash. Avoid AHAs, we love BHAs for skin of color. So the one I actually really like is 2% BHA from Paula's Choice because it, it has also got chamomile in it and vitamin E in it. So it's also a soother. So I believe it's called Paula's Choice Weightless Body Treatment. So that's the one that I'd recommend. Then I would follow up with Oyelatum. Oyelatum shower gel is fantastic because because it's an occlusive. So basically will stop any trans epidermal water loss throughout the night or throughout the day. And that will allow a healing environment to take place in the skin. Dry skin is often the reason for itchiness and uncomfortableness when it comes to keratosis pilaris. So we want to do everything we can to occlude the skin. So that's what oilatum's got 70% paraffin. And that's what that does is reduces dryness. The other thing you want to do is use creams that have humectants in them. So things like glycerin, urea. So the one I actually really like is 10% urea uh, from Eucerin and it's intensive lotion, which basically is has got urea in it. It's got no lactic acid in it um, and it's got no fragrance in it. So I really like this for skin of color. The other tip I would give you is to make sure you have a humidifier in your room. The reason I say this is because I want the water content of the room to be higher than your skin. That means that you're drawing water from the environment into your skin. If it's reverse, if the area and the, the environment is dry, then it will mean that you have more transepidermal water loss that will lead to dry skin, which will lead to more irritation, more itchiness and worsening of your keratosis pilaris. So it's a fantastic thing to do is to buy yourself a humidifier to put near your bed so that you are, your skin is actually absorbing the water from the air. Okay, so the biggest mistakes when it comes to keratosis pilaris is scrubbing. So scrubbing with a loof or a brush or anything like that that's gonna irritate the skin because all you're doing is actually taking away the top layer of the epidermis. You're not getting into the pore. The only thing that's actually gonna get into the pore is your fat soluble salicylic acid, which is why I recommended that as a wash. I would avoid any AHAs, so things like glycolic acid, lactic acid, for skin of color. And I'd also avoid any bar soaps because they've got solidifying agents in them that can actually clog the pores. I would avoid any micro peeling or any chemical peels. So microdermabrasion or chemical peels. The reason is this is exactly the same thing. You're just taking the top layer of skin away. And with skin of color, we actually need to take more care. So I'd opt for hydration 
over exfoliation. Now the steps that I've discussed in this video will help with the appearance of it, but it won't cure it. It tends to resolve by itself when you're in your 30s. If you have keratosis pilaris and you found a great moisturizer or a great product that you think's helped you, please can you write it in the comment section below for me. If you've got any other questions on keratosis pilaris, please write it below for me so I can do a follow-up video for you. And please don't forget to download your free ebook that goes through skincare for skin of color, so the best ingredients for our skin and the, the things that maybe we should be avoiding. I hope you found today helpful. Have a great day.